Switzer fellow Denny Takahashi Kelso is the executive vice president of Ocean Conservancy. Its focus is the long-range sustainability, productivity, and biodiversity of the ocean. This is Switzer Network News. Ocean Conservancy is a science-based advocacy group. We take science very seriously. We don't gather primary data, usually, but we do science analysis. We have science capacity in-house. It is primarily, though, to understand what the implications are of the most current science for a direction in policy. And by policy, I mean legislative policy, um, executive branch policy, state and federal. So our focus is let's understand what the science means, let's make the wisest policy choices we can, and then let's advocate hard to get them accomplished. We're focused on changes that could shift the entire system. So for example, acidification, which is not well understood yet, but which is clearly measurable, is one of the dimensions that we're paying close attention to. Ocean acidification changes the way organisms that live at the base or near the base of the food web uh, live their lives. So, for example, uh, organisms that depend upon the ability to lay down a shell that's made a, to some degree out of calcium may have difficulty accomplishing that or they may end up having to shift how they allocate their nutrition and energy in order to accomplish it. It may change the role they play in the food web. This is the kind of thing, though, that could change the productivity of the ocean. It could substantially affect the species that we think of as uh, valuable to us. And of course, the way we think about that is what we find on our dinner plate, usually uh, fish and shellfish. But the changes there seem already to be underway, and the tolerances are quite narrow. So it would not take a great change to have a very substantial effect. The Arctic this year marked the third greatest retreat of seasonal sea ice in history. The other two, the first and second, are within the past five years. So there is a substantial change underway. How fast that progresses and whether it's all in a, in a linear fashion, we'll have yet to see. But the point is, the, ch the connection between atmosphere and ocean is intimate. The changes in the atmosphere show up first in the ocean, and the ocean affects all of us wherever we live. If you live in Kansas, the ocean is affecting your life, it's affecting your economy, it's affecting your kid's future. If you live on the coast, it's an obvious connection, and although we won't understand all of the implications for a long time, it is definitely something that will uh, shape our future in ways that will be profound. Fundamentally, we're trying to look at sustainable ocean ecosystems and human uses of those ecosystems. That is, humankind has been involved in ocean ecosystems for as long as there's been history and a lot of prehistory. And we would expect that humankind will have a continuing role and be part of those ecosystems. In order to think about how we have a really shared ocean future, we need to think about how people can continue to use the benefits of the ocean, but not use them up. How they can provide for their kids, for their communities, and also provide for a future. And that's something we haven't taken very seriously in the past. In fact, I'd say we probably haven't thought about it very much. But now, given the complexity of uh, these uh, systems, of our economies, of the way that we uh, connect with other human communities around the world, we have to, because the, the ocean just can't sustain all the demands and all the abuse that we, uh, in our, our efforts to uh, support our communities and our economies, have placed on it. In July, President Obama announced a new national ocean policy. It's an executive order and it sets in motion a set of administrative actions that are intended to put legs on that national ocean policy. The reason that's so important to us is that it is a policy initiative that we think can lead to sustainability, that can engage both economy and ecology, and that will ultimately produce much better uh, plans and, and um, policy outcomes all along the coast of the, of the United States. 
we worked really hard to accomplish it. We worked with the president's staff, we worked with Congress, we worked with a variety of other uh, uh, nonprofit organizations. And so, although we always have partners in accomplishing this work, we feel as, this one, as if this one really has our, our imprint on it. This is a pivotal moment for ocean and for the human communities that depend on the ocean. And the choices we make now are really going to make a difference for all of us, our way of life, our economies, our children's future, and it's going to be in dimensions we can't even fully comprehend today. So it's important that we make no regrets choices. To do that, we have to use the best science, and we have to be willing to look seriously at what the hazards and risks are of making the wrong choices. And then we proceed and we make adjustments once we see how the science is beginning to tell us what the results are. But that's the key. Think about it clearly, take seriously the risks and hazards, and then chart a course and see how that goes by measuring the outcomes. For more information about this topic, please visit our website. This is Switzer Network News.